Good morning YouTube viewers and subscribers. So on my bench today, I've got a new in box Sato FA91S Gold Knight engine. And this is an engine from a new subscriber slash customer. And he asked me a week or so ago, maybe two weeks ago, if I would have a problem with setting up his brand new engine, doing a break-in run or two on it, and then setting it up for flight. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to actually make a video series, maybe a three to four part, probably only three part video series on using his engine. Now part one of this video and this video itself will be the steps I personally would do to go through and inspect a new inbox engine, uh, get it set up for the first runs. So I'm gonna go through that right now. So as you can see, gold and black series box which means this engine dates back to the 90s sometime and even though you can still probably get these and they say they're new in box an engine of this age you never really know I mean it probably is new in box but it doesn't mean that somebody hasn't messed with it and adjusted screws or played with it you know because you know we are all modelers and we love engines and sometimes you get an engine and you just want to kind of mess with it so obviously this is not stock this plastic wrap that's on here is not stock and the fact that it already has fuel tubing on there already leads me to some of my suspicions that maybe somebody's messed with this engine. Let me check and see what other things are included in here and make sure this all looks good. Okay so this in, engines of this vintage did include all of these items with this newer style manual however if you look here manuals that are from the 2000s on actually have the date on them so this also helps to identify the date of the engine and you can also tell by the number or the types of engines offered about when this was put out also and like I said from the box this is already a mid 90s or 1990s uh, time frame that decade that's the engine from that period <clears throat> so let's see what we got under here Nothing under there, under here, okay, here we've got our exhaust, again, standard Sato 91S exhaust. The only thing I'm not seeing is typically when you bought these engines, you would get a wrench like this. In fact, does that say Sato on it? No. But you'd normally get a box in or an opened in wrench that came with this. So that's the only thing I'm seeing that's not present here. So other than that, the box contents look good. Bring this in just a hair more here. So the first thing I would do when I pull out an engine that's new in box is I'm just going to give it a pretty general inspection here. Now this is absolutely a beautiful engine. And I want to look at the prop nuts first to see if they've ever been tightened down at all because they will give you indications of whether they've been actually hit with a wrench before. This one looks like it's in good shape. I don't see anything unusual there. Being that this is a gold night engine, um, things like that would show up a little bit more. It's a little harder to see the fasteners, but this thing looks absolutely fantastic. So, looks like general inspection is good. It does have the plug in there, and I do feel pretty decent compression. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this fuel line off for the moment. Now, the next thing I would do is I can pull the rocker covers here. And I think one of the things the Sato manual always mentions is that maybe you should pull these off initially and put a little bit of lubrication on them, which is what I intend to do. But I also want to verify that the valve lash is still correct and good. Okay. So this one here, the gasket came off on the rocker cover. Not a big deal. I'm not going to mess with that. I'm going to leave it just like that. So let's go on to, this looks dry, looks good. It doesn't look like it's ever been oiled. This looks and smells exactly as it should coming from the factory. So I'm going to start off by just putting a couple of drops here on these moving parts. Maybe hit the spring area and then try and get some oil to go 
capillary action to go down that rocker arm or that push rod tube. That just ensures that when you go to fire this thing up for the first time, all of these moving parts won't really be dry. So next, I'm going to go ahead and really quickly check the valve lash. So I'm going to put it in this vise and very gently hold it in place here. That way it's held in place. Now I'm also going to pull the plug out. Okay, so I've got a toothpick here. Now, because I'm trying to do this on video and not get my head in the way, I'm going to do this slightly different. But when you check or and or set the valve lash of a four-stroke engine, the engine absolutely needs to be cold. You don't do it after it's been run and it's hot. And you want to get the piston so it's a top dead center right after your intake stroke. So there's exhaust, here's intake, and I'm going to use a toothpick and just stick it in here and feel for when I'm at top dead center. So I'm at top dead center now and I also usually kind of stick my face in there and look at that but I'm not going to do that at this time because I'm trying to do it on video. Now Sato always provides this very small feeler gauge and this is a 0.1 millimeter gauge. Zero my caliper here and I'll clamp on this and you'll see that that's not zeroed. Now let's zero it. So this is a 0.11 gauge. Now I use a set that I've always had from an OS engine which always came with like a 0.05 it says but I don't know if that's what this one's going to measure. Yeah 0.05 millimeters and then they also gave you in the old days a 0.1 also. I just use these because and I'm not going to use the ones from this box because I don't want to disturb the contents. So I always use the 0.05 as my go gauge and the 0.1 as my no go gauge. So if this 0.1 goes in here, which it doesn't, that's good, I would adjust those rocker or the valve lash. It does not go in either of these. So that's a good thing. So knowing that that doesn't go in there, if you've only got the Sato gauge to go with, you can use the Sato gauge and say, okay, it doesn't go in there, but then if you can actually feel that there's still lash and there's a little bit of movement, then you're set fine. So this one is set fine, but just for the heck of it, I'll pull my 05 in there, and it goes perfectly. So our valve lash is perfect, and there's nothing more to be done there. Okay, so the next thing I do here is I want to check out the carb. Now this carb is set up with the Venturi or the Velocity Stack I should say as many of these older ones were. So the kicker here is that it doesn't have a choke lever slide. So I'm hoping that when I go to do the prime test it'll work. Now this is a I would say this is probably more of a late 90's uh, Sato carb because it does not have a throttle stop screw on here. So, you know, I like to set this thing up, uh, the idle speed, using a throttle stop screw, but in the absence of having a throttle stop screw, it means I need to hold that throttle barrel open to a certain degree, and this velocity stack is going to make that a little bit more difficult because I typically use a T-pin. Typically use a T-pin to do that, and what I would do is I would just drop it down in the hole, and close the throttle on it because this will give me about 0.78778 millimeters of opening which is usually kind of a good starting point for your idle. Um, the other thing I'm going to inspect here and look at is how is the idle adjustment screw set? Now on these Sato engines that have the metal throttle arm, you want to see the base or factory setting is to have that idle adjustment screw or low speed adjustment screw flush with this metal arm, which it is on this engine. So this is set good. Now if you've got a newer Sato engine that has a plastic throttle arm, then the factory setting is going to be about one millimeter recessed from the outer portion of that throttle arm. 
So let's see if we close this high speed needle all the way. I'm going to open it three turns. One, two, three. Now I'm probably going to have to try and bend my T pin so I can drop it in here. So I can get that closed and test that. Okay, there we go. So now what I do is I put a piece of fuel tubing on here and full open. Obviously you're going to have a lot of airflow. Now I'm going to close this and see, I've already verified visually that this should be good, but I'm going to do it here again. Hopefully you can hear the difference between idle and full throttle. That's about what it should sound like. So right now, our carb is preliminarily set up. Now, I'm going to put the glow plug in and do our final check, which is the leak fuel prime and or leak test. What I mean by that is what I do is I'll get a fuel tank that's got a little bit of fuel in it. I'll connect it to the inlet and with the throttle wide open like I was going to choke it, I'll hold my finger under here to prime it and I'm looking to see if fuel gets drawn up in that fuel tube. See how the fuel just got drawn up in there? The other thing I want to look for, I'm still holding that, is I want to look to make sure that I don't see the fuel drawing back because that would be the sign of a leak. So if I remove my finger from there, you're going to see fuel pour out and then it draws back because I've just uh, released the vacuum I had on it. So the fuel leak prime test is also successful. So this engine is now ready to be mounted to a stand, prop installed, and run for the very first time. So those are the steps that I go through to inspect a brand new engine in the box and I use these same steps if I'm looking at a used engine for the first time also. I mean these are just steps that I take when I'm going to put any engine, any four stroke engine on the stand new or used and that's first of all is a general inspection overall condition of the engine especially if it's used look at the fastener heads and make sure that everything looks like it's in good working order and then I'll check remove the rocker covers check for valve lash check the proper uh, lash make sure they don't look too dry put a little bit of lubrication on them so that the first runs it's not at least moving on dry metal on metal parts and then I'll inspect the carb, get the carb preliminarily set up, and I've got another video that shows how I set up carbs anyway. So I do that, and then I do my fuel leak, or my air leak prime test. And once all four of those checks are done, I deem the engine ready to put on the stand.